What's up, Banger TV? This is Daniel DK back for another artist interview. Today, I am chatting with Ole Drake from Evile. They've just released their sixth studio record called The Unknown. We get into the new sound vocally and riff-wise on that record. We talk about the benefit of having seen the industry from two different eras through Evile's career, and also how to keep things lighthearted on the roads. stuff I want to talk about here because obviously uh on the last album we were all talking about how this is you know obviously the comeback eight years no record but then it's like okay your brother Matt's out of the fold you're stepping up not only being like a crazy lead guitar wizard writer kind of brainchild of the band but now you're also going to try and sing in it and I think that there was a lot of talk about how that transition was going to go and mm-hmm. we personally talked about it. You know, there's a lot of work and adapting the way you do stuff, but the response was incredible. It was awesome. And I, th- I thought you really found your place. And then new record comes out. And the first thing that everyone notices is like, holy shit, all changed his voice again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't change. Like growing up, I've always been able to sing. Like I love melodic singing. Some of my favorite stuff is like, king diamond and you know power metal i love melodic stuff um but i could never really do it healthily like if i was recording demos i'd taste blood and it just, i just didn't know what i was doing really and helen leash was it was tough because all i could do but it kind of suited the songs doing the cavalera kind of bark so it it worked it was cool but when it came to this one it was like you know, we, we were trying different tempos that we'd never done before. And because the songs were slower, when you do, when you play slower, the vocals are just there. They're way more there than they are when you're playing faster. So it just did not suit more of a, a gruff sound. It, it suited the melody and more hooks. So I, I've always wanted, I wanted to do more melodic singing on the first one, but it just, it didn't suit the songs. It had to be that. Oh. You were never a singer and then in a band. And then mm. you, you know, you did the last record with the Cavalier voice, we're going to call it. And then on this one, you're doing a lot more of like your uh, melodic, yeah, yeah stuff. And um, I mean, I got, I got to imagine there was like, did you, did you have to teach yourself? Is there, was there like a, a, a lessons or regimen you went through like to get, cause I mean, dude, it's like, you're, you're all over the place. You're kind of like coming out as a first time singer on these last two records. And it's like, you've already mastered both ends of the spectrum. So tell, tell me what go, went on like preparation and, uh, and, and planning wise to, to pull this off. After Helen Leashed, well, during Hel- Helen Leashed, actually, I, I got in touch with Melissa Cross and I, I just laid bare. I just said, this is the situation, please help. And she did. And she, she's a, she's an angel. She really saved me. She showed me a lot of things I never even knew about the voice. Um, a lot of techniques, a lot of warming up, um, exercises, and just made me understand my voice more before I was just shouting exactly from my throat and you don't do that. Mm -hmm. And it was just two years of heavy, heavy learning and practicing, like in my car, driving to work at rehearsals, I'd go to rehearsal and we'd play. And then I blow my voice and I'm like, well, that didn't work. <laughs> Go back next week. It was a lot of that. And, you know, I spoke to a lot of other singers as well. It's everyone from like Fernanda from Crypto, um, Mark Cardavox on YouTube. Look, I was asking everyone, everyone I knew that was a singer I was like, have you got any tips, anything that could help me? And um, yeah, just a lot of work. Um, I'm still learning now. Like I, I'm still not where I want to be. Um, there's still little things in, in my technique that I'm like, I can't get over that hurdle. So yeah, it's just a work in progress. So the next album will be, um, falsetto power metal. <laughs> yeah. we got to get, we got to get your Halford vocal. Tell me about the live experience versus the studio experience, stepping on stage as a singer for the first time and kind of how that, how that all went and 
or, or ch did changes need to be made? Did you suddenly become that lead singer type that can't talk between shows and is no fun and just wants to sleep and <laughs> yell at everyone? <laughs> no, if, if it was maybe five or 10 years ago, I wouldn't have been able to do it because I gave more of a shit back then and I worried about things or what people might think or anything. And because I'm the age I am, I, I can just be myself and just not give a shit. So that really helps. But in terms of the playing and singing, it was a challenge because there's some riffs that I wrote for Matt to then do the vocals for, and I never even considered what the voice might be doing. So when it came to playing some of these songs, I just, I was like, yeah, I feel really sorry for Matt now. <laughs> and dude, sounds like you're channeling a bit of Matt. Like you're, you're the voice on this record. It's like closer to a classic Evil Eve vocal from, you know, the band we knew from uh you know four records prior um it sounds a lot more than on hell it, it was a re it, mm. it, fe it felt like a rebirth for me and that's what i told you when that album came out is it did yeah. you know riff wise there was still you know your distinct personality in the riffing but the vocally the it was a rebirth for the band and i loved it but this this feels like getting a lot back more to like what you know what you and your brother were doing in the beginning with the sound and and, and the vocally I th especially i think it might just be genetics because <laughs> we're brothers you know this I've, I've noticed a few times i'm listening to it there's a few lines where i've i've said something or sung something i've just thought shit that does sound a bit like mad <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome and it that's wasn't rad. on purpose <laughs> i i i, I kind of get the vibe that you don't give a shit and i think that ties perfectly into you know the next thing i want to tackle which is um hey we're evil we're a thrash band you know us for being the you know the full 500 mile per hour assault constantly and uh here's our record full of mid-tempo stomp and ballad um it's kind of like the not giving a fuck move and just kind of doing things on your own terms is the vibe i get um tell me about the decision to ultimately slow things down because hell unleash was so full on it was just speed there was like 85 percent speed 15 percent not speed and we we always try and do things differently or unexpectedly and we I, I just didn't want to do the same thing again. I didn't want to do another thrash album that has all the typical tropes that thrash has. And we just said, let's just flip it on its head. Let's do 85% slower, stompier stuff, 15% thrash. The, the catalyst for that was that we have so many tempos that were never visited or explored. So we, we were always either really fast or mid-tempo. There was nothing here, nothing here. And... We looked at all the temps we'd done and was like, there's so much we haven't done. So I just played around with different speeds and it's pretty much the same approach for every album that I stroke, we have written. It's just different speeds. It's still the riffs from the same brains. And, and that's all I can say really. The fact it has a ballad, we've done two ballads before. We've got people saying like, oh, they've done a ballad. It's not thrash. Eval have lost it. It's like, We've done ballads before. We've done Tune. Slow Dude, one of your yeah. best songs is a fucking ballad, yeah. man. My yeah. favorite song. I love um, Tune. It's a wicked, wicked song. Obviously, it's the easiest thing to do ever is to draw comparisons of your band to Metallica for like, literally, I could start with 30 reasons right now. We don't need to go down that route. But since like the first release, that's always been the easy comparison. So let's keep things easy and on the level here if you are you know today's answer uh to you know what metallica was then uh is this your like and justice meets black album kind of era like are we are we having our harvest harvester of sorrow meets our uh, nothing else matters moment that's kind of the vibe i'm getting whichever metallica album you want to call it is fine yeah, you're you, cool. You just dude. go for it. <laughs> yeah, you're you're cool, dude. I can't get you to acknowledge the black album comparison. Come on. Oh, I I obviously understand that it's going to be said because it is being said, but it was not a oh, you know, let's try and do our that. Yeah. But no, there's no way a band like us could have explored slower tempos and not been called that or attributed to that because it's just unavoidable. It's, they're my favorite band of all time and we're playing slower tempos it's gonna happen tell me about the album artwork it's so moody what's going on there I, I met Eloran at an exhibition of his in the UK uh, we've worked with him before on the Skull album but that wasn't my doing that was Matt's um, I had a different concept for it but we went with Matt and I spoke to him there and I said I'd love to work with you again 
Um, I told him a few of the ideas and I mentioned the unknown because it was kind of written at the time. And he just happened to be the same age as me. He has kids as well. And I didn't have to say anything. And he says, I've got it. And I know, I know what you need. So it's like, okay. So we went away and I emailed him. My only criteria for it was I want something simple, uh, striking, not typically metal, and maybe a bit of blue because we don't have much blue in our covers. That's all I said. And he sent that over like the, the rough draft or sketch, whatever. And I was just instantly blown away. I, I, I can't describe what I mean, but it was, it was what I was looking for. And I know it sounds simple, but when I saw it, it was like, I knew that was what I wanted as soon as I saw it. And he's, he's amazing. Eleran is, really really good i just can't believe how much the art looks like the music sounds and it i could i couldn't be happy with it yeah the cover's awesome the blue is uncharacteristic for you and it, it's moody and the negative space i love it man it's a really cool cover yeah it's it, unlike any other eval cover which which is what i like we, we like doing things a bit off the wall you know speaking of doing things off the wall you probably get that itch because of how long you've kind of been doing this and um it's cool because you got to take a, a a break in the middle. You had, you know, you had a lot of years there where you weren't involved in the music industry at all. And I kind of want to pick your brain a bit about, you know, uh, that that sort of perspective, like, you know, that era, earache era then versus kind of like Napalm era now, the big things that have changed for you, things that you used to do that don't work anymore, things you've had to adapt. You know, you've had the benefit of really seeing the industry in in two very uh, different eras and being away in the middle i feel like it's kind of like you're like austin powers and you were like you know like frozen you come back out and you ask for a ransom of a million dollars like i feel like maybe you had a moment like that when you came back and just didn't you know it'd been eight years it's a long time a lot of shit changed thrashy baby um it was <laughs> i guess when we started the earlier days and the eric days everything the goal was different like social media wasn't really what it is today there was myspace and i loved myspace it was so good yeah, the best. and you just put your songs on there and people went there and listened to them and that was it there wasn't much promotion you just do some posters on your page and people would come to the shows and then the more it grew it just became this this animal that i started to not understand until the past couple of years but the time out really um helped me reflect on 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 why i did it because the reason i left well there was many reasons i left but the main reason i left was because it just started to feel pointless because you know we'd, we'd travel to taiwan and back like twelve thousand miles away for five days and i don't even think we made any money or we lost money even it cost us that much and i was at that point where it was like the the camel that broke the the camel that broke the straws back. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I'm sure that's right. <laughs> and it was just, you know, I, I can't do this anymore. I want to, I want to have a normal life for a bit and get a job, actually earn some money for once and maybe start a family. And I did. And then, um, the, the guy who replaced me just disappeared off the face of the earth seemingly. And then I just joked with Matt, like, if you need a guitarist, let me know. And I did. You talked about, um, you know, starting a family and having real life during those eight years. And uh, that's something I really uh, admire about you because I know it, it isn't easy to walk away from something when it's like the only way of life that you really know. And equally, it's not easy to walk back into that insane clusterfuck of a lifestyle when you've successfully removed yourself from it, survived, found a way to make money, found someone who's willing to tolerate you for life and make children with you. I mean, like it's, yes. you had it all set up and then you walked right back into it. I'm what? like the metal John Wick without <laughs> any fighting. <laughs> You're back. Historically, you've always been um, boutique spiky guitar guy. Uh, you know, Moser's back in the day, the Carillion guitars now. I feel like I think you might be using a Kemper or something live and what's, tell me about, Tell me about the live rig. What do you got? What do you got rocking now? Tell me about that new Carillion guitars. That that second one you got is super sexy. Tell me, tell me what you're rocking right now uh, for the live rig. 
Yeah, so I have the two Carillions. The newest one is, I don't know what color because I'm colorblind. It's a cool color. It's like um, charcoal y and, and gray and black. I don't know, it's dark. It's cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll trust you. And honestly, because we're doing mainly festivals, the campers have really helped because we can fly in and fly out. And we always have the sound that we want and need. So I, I remember one festival we did recently. We said, no, let's not, let's not take the campers. Let's just use the ones, the amps there. And I can't remember where it was, but it was a, they were Engel amps. And I love Engel amps. They're great amps. But for some reason, the ones that were at this festival, we got there and plugged in. And no matter what me or Adam did, it just sounded clean. We were trying everything. I was like, we need distortion. I eventually got a bit of a distortion sound, but it, we just couldn't get it. So we just said, like, we're just going to fly with our Kempers from now on. Mm. And again, it might be because I'm a bit older and it might be a bit of a lazy thing. But when I'm setting up, because we don't have a crew or anything, we can't afford anything like that. I like just getting on, plugging in, starting. Mm. I, I don't want to worry about anything blowing up or like we've had so many amps blow up over the years and it goes straight to the front of house. I can change the volume on my cab without affecting the front of house when it's in my ears i really like the sound of the camper um a lot of people have recently been telling me to stop using campers and use blah 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 it's like well no i like what i'm using <laughs> so no so yeah it's it's more out of necessity but um lassie lamaire does some really cool custom profiles on the camper and the, the one i use for rhythm and lead are just just amazing they cut through really well we recently used um, Simon Ephemy, the producer, to do some live sound for us. And even he said, like, don't do anything with your Kembers. The sounds you have got are perfect for a sound engineer. So ever since that, we've just not touched anything. So are those, are those profile patches that you use for Evile Live available to anyone on the internet? No, no, they're no? not. They're, it's, I went to Lassie and said, Build I, for well, me. I described the sound I need, and uh. he'd send one of like, no, can it be, be a bit more gainy, but chunky, but still clear, a uh, bit more dime bag in there. And he just got it right. And I've not looked back since. Quickly, I want to know what, what was this exhorter thing? I really just selfishly, I want to know because I love, uh, yeah, Slaughter in the Vatican oh. and the law are like records I love. And I love Kyle and those guys are rad. And I saw you, how did that end up, how did that end up being happening? And then obviously it didn't happen, but how did that even end up being happening that you were going to play guitar for Exhorter? So I got a message from a guy who works with them and just, I, I never usually go in my like message requests on DMs and stuff. And I just happened to this time and the start of the message was, it was kind of something to do with like, would you consider playing? And I thought, playing what? So I opened, it was like, play with Exhorter. And I initially just wrote it off. I was like, oh, this is probably bullshit. Uh, so then I went back to it and then got in touch with Kyle. And he was just like, right, we we can't get our um, guitarist over for UK shows. Um, so would you be up for playing this festival in the UK? And then we have also have a gig in Greece. So it would be play UK, fly to Greece with us, and then fly home. And I was, I was like, me being the cocky shit I am sometimes, I was like, yeah, fire. I've heard Exhorter stuff. It's cool. I'll, I'll be fine. Um, just send me the set list and I'll, I'll, I'll get learning. Um, uh, so I started listening. I've, I've listened to Exhorter before, but I hadn't listened to them in a guitar sense. Like, I just heard the songs like, oh, cool. And then I sat down to learn the riffs and I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's not the easiest shit in the world. Yeah, there's some riffs that I was just like, Carl, you, you're going to have to tell me what this part is. I have no idea. So, um, but yeah, that, that was going on. I, I learned the whole set. Um, even like the tragic period, which is not the easiest song in the world. Like it's, it's really, it's there's so much stuff. But um, I got it all learned and then the festival in the UK had to cancel because of low ticket sales, which in turn, because the U the fee for the UK festival was going to pay for the traveling for both gigs. So then the, the crew couldn't afford to get to Greece because of that canceling. So the Greece one had to cancel. And then it, it was just, that was it. 
I mean, I understand, you know, I'm I'm not I wasn't pissed off at all. I was just like, oh fuck, I I was gonna play with Exoda, but you know, I understand. A fee from one festival paying for the transportation to another, which in turn has to cancel a tour and like all this shit. This is real life. So when you hear about bands canceling shows, like we're not happy to do that. We didn't want to do that. When you hear about bands talking about it being hard to do things the way we used to do them is very real. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the smallest little financial road bump can literally derail an entire tour. Especially we, now when everything's so expensive. It's crazy. So be a gem and go easy on your bands when they be announcing tours and all you want to do is yell at them about not playing cities or not enough or when they have to cancel something. You know, uh, have a little compassion for your your local band these days because uh, shit's tough out there. And uh, it's, as you can see, at every level of the industry, uh, you know, Anthrax be canceling tours and X Hoarder be canceling tours. That should be very yeah. real. Old Drake and Evile on the new album slower and more honest uh than ever and uh i think it's really resonating with fans feedback's been awesome i saw the kerrang review today holy shit dude that, that was really nice review um Very so cool. stoked for you stoked for the boys tell everyone i say hello and uh thanks for hanging all it's always always good catching up and uh it's always good to have new music to talk about we're stoked everyone check out the unknown on napalm records out now buy it on vinyl buy it on cd then buy some extras to give to your friends how about that oh, yes. Yeah.